anthropology? Well, as you say, it's a whole new concept, a whole new way of thinking about what it means to be a human being in nutritional terms. It, we've gradually come to the realization that to understand how human beings should be feeding themselves, we've got to go back to our origins. So what we do as nutritional anthropologists, we go back to human origins, we understand what they are, we understand how human beings lived at that time, and the sort of use they made of the feeding opportunities they had there. And when we understand that, we put together the pieces of a jigsaw which fit perfectly with what we understand about our biochemistry, about how our digestive system works, and how, in fact, by putting the wrong kind of gas in the tank, we're now making ourselves sick in today's world. Jeff, in one of the tables in your book, you recommend that we should be eating at least four pounds of vegetables a day. Well, for most of this, this is quite a volume. And how can we incorporate this into our busy lifestyle? Yes, I talk about eating, well, and this is what our ancestors did, of course, they ate four to five pounds of vegetation. I talk, I talk about plant food. Uh, and the other side of it, they'll be eating perhaps 25% of their diet would be what I call animal matter. Well, when we're talking about plant food, what am I saying? Yes, I'm saying, well, there's fruits, there's salads, and there's what we call vegetables. And um, if you're going to be eating a couple of pounds of fruit a day, and if you're going to be eating a big salad a day, and you're going to eat good portions of vegetables a day, you get up to those sorts of figures. So it's not actually all that daunting if you break it down and realize how it can build up to those sorts of numbers. But you do have to get used to larger volumes on your plate than to what you're used to. Jeff, in our society, dairy products are one of the mainstays of what's considered to be a good diet. And yet, in your book, you make the point that after the age of four, dairy products are not only not necessary but can actually be harmful yes well what i like to do is to go back to basics again and say well you know were our ancestors back there on the savannas were they walking up to an antelope or an elephant yanking the calf away squealing just a day or two after it was born and then drinking the memory the fluid from the mammary glands instead of the calf the answer is no uh, so there is a predisposition to suppose that probably milk is not great for human beings. Um, and then when we look into it, we discover that there are huge drawbacks. And it's drawbacks, even if it's human milk, isn't great for human beings once they've got past babyhood. Because basically as babies or as calves or the young of a species of a mammal, um, we, our biology is different. We have different digestive arrangements, we have different enzymes, our needs are different. We're building brains. I sometimes say in my talks that, you know, why do you want to drink cow's milk or even goat's milk for that matter? That's designed to, do, to build big horns and small brains. Is that what you want? Um, it's a way of making a point that it's designed for a particular purpose. And putting it into human beings isn't necessarily going to be a great thing. I mean, when I was uh, a young man growing up in Britain, uh, they, and it was just after the war, there was um, very little milk around. But when it started to come back, we used to look for the, the milk bottles that had the thick cream on the top. We now understand that that's not great. We now understand that that saturated fat isn't great for human biochemistry. It does all sorts of things um, to us. But then there are worse things. This is the lactose that's in milk. People say to me sometimes, you know, my doctor's told me I'm lactose intolerant. There's something wrong with me. And I say, no, there's nothing wrong with you. It's normal to be lactose intolerant. That's how human beings are. After the age of about three or four years old, once you're weaned, your body stops producing the various kinds of enzymes that cope with it. And secondly, you don't need it. Um, so now, the dairy industry is producing skim milk, which is lactose-free. Okay, so where are they going to go next? Well, I think the next target will be the casein that's in milk. What is, what's wrong with casein? Well, that's the protein that's in milk. That's, a, that's a, a protein which is one of the most powerful cholesterol raisers we know of, and it's very allergenic. So maybe they'll produce a milk which doesn't have lactose, which doesn't have the fat, and which doesn't have the casein. What are you left with? Why are we bothering? Jeff, given your comments on dairy products and the fact that they're not really healthy for us, I'm wondering if perhaps there is a political or economic agenda going on that is trying to get us to believe otherwise. 
The whole idea of dairy farming and eating dairy products was very much a, a northern European idea. The, the English brought it over to America and to Canada and New Zealand and Australia. But what we don't realize is that these are basically only countries that actually think that consuming dairy products is a normal thing. Almost every other society in the world, from the Chinese to the Africans to the Latin Americans to the Australian Aboriginals, not only do they think it's grotesque, it actually makes them sick straight off the bat.